I'm absolutely delighted now to be joined by Professor Lu Yu. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. It is a great pleasure for me too. Now, you, you addressed uh, the APS yesterday, uh, development of uh, physics in China, physics teaching in China. Give us a little bit of a, a background, if you will, about the, the progress that's been made in uh, China. Uh, I would say that the progress uh, uh, made in China for the last half century is really enormous because the modern condensed matter physics was almost non-existing in China, say, I mean, 50, 60 years ago. But since the beginning of this new century, I think China is really making big progress. So many of my colleagues were asking my question, uh, what happened? What, uh, how did this kind of quanta transition occur? Mm -hmm. I tried to, in my talk to address this issue, not from the general aspect, but mostly from my personal aspect. I was educated in former Soviet Union, but unfortunately it, it did not last too long, just because uh, China and the Soviet Union broke up, so I was not allowed to do PhD there. Uh, more than that, I was not allowed to travel for 17 years. But even during this Cultural Revolution, the most difficult period, we could do something on fundamental research. We were surprised to find so what was going on in the world was a big, big revolution in the physical science, and the, especially in the phase transition and the critical phenomena. But with my colleagues, we could not just uh, only follow the literature, but we also did some contribution, did some calculation. Then later on, in 1975, there was a big delegation of American Physical Society. That visit, that was exchange visit, was really very helpful, very important for us and for me personally. And later on, I had chance, after 17 years, to travel to Europe to attend this famous survey conference in Brussels. And later on, just because I could do something during the Cultural Revolution, I was appointed as the first staff member at the International Center for Theoretical Physics in Trieste. And uh, I was working there for 17 years. Now, bringing things up to, 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 to date today, uh, the Chinese government uh, has put a, a, a lot of resources, a, a lot of energy into uh, physics in uh, China, hasn't it? That is correct. Uh, not only in physics, but uh, I don't have the precise uh, statistics, but uh, roughly speaking, the funding for scientific research has been increasing at the rate of 10 to 15 percent per year. So actually, I mean, the total budget for R&D now is roughly close to 2 percent of GDP. Okay. So in a sense, uh, we cannot complain too much that uh, we don't have uh, funds for science research. So that was very helpful. And this meeting itself, finally, this meeting itself is a very good opportunity for, for people from a lot of different countries to, to come together and to collaborate. Sure. And uh, in fact, the Chinese participation is quite big. I don't have the statistic, but the, I, I would estimate it's of the order a couple of or 300 people coming. In fact, uh, many of these people they were working as a staff and the research and the teachers at the American University. They returned back to China recently and uh, they got to put positions there. They started to, to do research and also to train students. So not only they, they themselves returned back to this meeting, they also brought the Chinese students. I heard of the order of 100 Chinese students uh, attended this conference. They have benefited enormously from this best opportunity for scientific exchange. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much indeed for, for, for taking the time to talk to us today and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mary, too.